Okay, so today we're going to be talking about lipid catabolism. And so what we have here is a fatty acid. Fatty acid is just going to be a chain of carbons with a, uh, two oxygens. Next, we have a triacylglycerol. Triacylglycerol is going to have a backbone of th three carbons with three uh, hydroxyl groups, such as this. And when you have a glycerol and a fatty acid coming together... Remember that the R just stands for any amount of carbon chains. Then when you have the glycerol and the fatty acid come together, then what you get is your triacylglycerol. Tri, three, acyl is going to mean the fatty acid groups and the glycerol backbone. Next we have beta oxidation, just um, overall what happens. So first you have a fatty acid, and you have an alpha carbon and a beta carbon. And the beta carbon is going to be at the third carbon from the oxygen head. And what you're going to see is uh, the carbon is going to get cut at the third carbon or the beta carbon. And oftentimes your fatty acids are going to have an um, uneven number of carbons. And this bond is going to get cleaved um, during beta oxidation, which we'll talk about in detail a little bit later. So next here, uh, another type of situation that we have going on is lipases. So lipases are going to take the triacylglycerol and what's going to happen is a reaction with the lipase and the triacylglycerol is going to lead to a cleavage of one of the acyl groups. So what you'll get next is a diacylglycerol, which is going to have two of the uh, acyl groups, the fatty chains, and then one hydroxyl group. Next, what you're going to have here is you're going to have uh, another lipase is going to cleave the second um, acyl group off, and then that's going to give you an acylglycerol, which has two hydroxyl groups and one fatty acid group. And last but not least, you're going to have the third lipase come in. It's going to take off that last acyl group. And now you're back to your glycerol molecule. So uh, what happens to glycerol? So you're going to have glycerol get converted into a glycolysis intermediate that you're familiar with, which is going to be DHAP. So what you have here is the molecule of dihydroxyl acetone, or DHAP. And this is going to occur over two steps, which is what we're going to talk about next. So the first step is you have glycerol, and it's going to have a glycerol kinase. So if you remember kinases, usually use ATP and donate the, one of their phosphate groups. And so here we see that the phosphate group gets donated to the third carbon, giving you glycerol 3-phosphate. Next, we have that glycerol 3 phosphate undergoing the second step, which is going to be uh, done by the enzyme glycerol phosphate dehydrogenase. If you remember dehydrogenases from our TCA video, they're going to have NADH and it's going to uh, reduce NADH to, I mean, it's going to have NAD, sorry, and it's going to be reduced to NADH. That's going to give you your product of DIHAP, the dihydroxyacetone phosphate. So as you see, it, hydro it um, oxidizes that second carbon. So next, what we're looking at is our mitochondria. Beta oxidation is going to take place in the mitochondrial matrix. So we have to get our um, 
our fatty acids into the mitochondrial matrix, which is what we're going to be talking about first. So this happens in three steps. Uh, well, four if you count this first reaction. So first you have your fatty acid, which is outside of the mitochondria, which is in the um, cytosol. And it's going to react with the cytosolic enzyme, and that's going to allow a S-CoA to be placed on it. Then it's going to react. This is the first um, reaction in the transfer of the fatty acid into the mitochondrial matrix. So it's going to react with carnitine to give you fatty acid carnitine. And that reaction is going to be um, done by the enzyme carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1. So next what we have happen is that the fatty acid carnitine goes into the intermembrane space because of this carnitine palmitoyl transferase and um, now that it's in the intermembrane space it's going to want to get into the mitochondrial matrix so in order to do that, we're going to have another enzyme. Um, and this is going to be step two in this process. It's going to be done by carnitine acetyltransferase. And it's going to essentially get that fatty acid carnitine from the intermembrane into the mitochondrial space. And this is actually done by Synport. It's... Uh, exchanges the fatty acid carnitine for a molecule of carnitine. And so now we have fatty acid carnitine inside the mitochondrial matrix. So from here, what happens is it reacts using carnitine palmitoyl transferase 2, and it decomposes back into your fatty acid uh, CoA, and your molecule of carnitine. So the, the carnitine palmitoyl transferase 2 basically uh, cleaves off the fatty acid from the carnitine and transfers it to a molecule of acetyl-CoA. So in summary of fatty acid transfer, so this is just getting the fatty acid from the cytosol into the mitochondrial matrix, our first step is starting in the cytosol, we have fatty acid, it reacts with coenzyme A to give you fatty acid um, CoA. And then our second step takes that fatty acid CoA and it reacts with carnitine. And this reaction yields your fatty acid carnitine. And this is done by your carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1. And that gets your fatty acid from your cytosol to your intermembrane space. Next, what we have is we have carnitine So it's going to use the carnitine acetyltransferase and that's basically going to get the fatty acid from the fatty acid carnitine from the inner membrane space to the matrix. And then the last step we have is fatty acid carnitine Going, to, going back to carnitine and fatty acid CoA, and this is done by the enzyme carnitine palmitoyl transferase 2. So now we're going to talk about control points in this cycle. The main control point is going to be happening here at step 2, 
And what's going to be occurring is that a molecule of melanocoA is actually going to inhibit carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1. So here we're going to discuss really quickly um, you know, about mal melanocoA, so how melanocoA is actually controlled. So what you have first here is a molecule of acetyl-CoA, and it gets turned into your molecule of melanocoA. How this happens is a molecule of ATP is used, and this is going to be a high energetic state, right? So more ATP you have, the more melanocoA is going to be there, and melanocoA would uh, stop the reaction that transfers the fatty acid. So that makes sense, right? If you're in a high energetic state, you don't need um, as much fatty acid oxidation. So next we're going to be talking about beta oxidation. So this is the summary. So overall what the reaction you have is you have fatty acid, uh, fatty acyl-CoA plus FAD and NADH plus a molecule of acetyl-CoA, or sorry, not acetyl-CoA, but coenzyme A, and that's going to give you fatty acyl-CoA minus two carbons, plus FADH, plus NADH, plus H, plus acetyl-CoA. The steps that you're going to have is your first step is going to be done by acyl-CoA dehydrogenase. Your second is going to be enol-CoA hydratase. Your third reaction is going to be done by hydroxyacyl-CoA dehydrogenase. And your fourth reaction here is going to be done by beta keto thiolase. So first reaction, acetyl-CoA dehydrogenase. So if you remember before, dehydrogenase, as you can imagine, is going to involve NADH. So we have our alpha and beta carbons here on our fatty acid. And what happens is a molecule of FAD is going to be used to FADH2. Um, so sorry, dehydrogenase can be either NAD or FAD. Um, and that's going to actually cause a double bond between the alpha and beta carbon. So those hydrogens are going to be taken away and it's going to be giving you a double bond. So next, enol-CoA hydratase. So hydratase, as you can maybe think about, hydra is usually water. So water is going to be added to this molecule. It's going to be added to that double bond that we just made. And that OH is going to add with the oxygen on the beta carbon and the hydrogen on the alpha. So our third reaction here is hydro, hydroxyacyl-CoA dehydrogenase. So this one, um, again, is going to have NADH, because hydrogenase either has FADH or NADH. We already used our molecule of FADH. So it's going to take, again, that um, area between the alpha and beta carbon. What it's going to do is it's going to have your NAD+, plus, and it's going to actually... Um, reduce the NAD. Okay, so our fourth reaction here is the beta ketothiolase. And from that double bonded O that we made in the last step, what's going to happen is we're going to add a molecule of CoA. And it's going to actually cleave this molecule. So this is where we get the elimination of the two carbons. So here we have the CoA added to where that first um, double bonded O is, where that orange one is. And then we have our second molecule, uh, which is a molecule 
of acetyl-CoA. And I apologize, in the past I've been writing it as the fatty acid with an OH, but it should have actually already had a CoA, um, which will yield your two molecules, fatty acid molecules with CoA. And the cycle continues over and over again until all of the molecules are cleaved into um, acetyl-CoA. And this acetyl-CoA actually goes into the TCA cycle. So next we're going to talk quickly about ketogenesis. So when you're fasting, um, glucose isn't going to be taking, taken up into your cells. This can happen either in diabetes where uh, insulin isn't taking up the glucose or it can be because you're not eating and not having glucose. Um, glucogenesis, gluconeogenesis is going to happen, which means making new glucose out of uh, substrates that isn't glucose. And oxaloacetate is going to be used um, for, that would usually be used for the TCA cycle is depleted because it's actually using gluconeogenesis. So now that you can't do the TCA, what are you going to do with the uh, acetyl-CoAs? So there are two ketone bodies that we're going to talk about. This is the reaction to get to the first ketone body. So what you have is you have two molecules of acetyl-CoA. They come together with the beta ketothiolase, um, or it's using the enzyme beta ketothiolase to combine those two molecules, yielding one CoA. And then the second step to this is once you have that molecule, you're going to go through HMG CoA synthase. And what this is going to do is it's going to add another acetyl-CoA and it's going to yield you a CoA attached to a sulfur. So what's happening here is basically the reaction is occurring at that, um, at that beta double bonded O and you add in a, a, second, a third molecule of acetyl-CoA, which is what we're looking at here. So this is just highlighting where the different molecules are. So um, that's the CH3. So here, the third step is um, HMG-CoA lyase. So what we're going to get here is we get the... Um, the separation of those two molecules because that OH on the first molecule gets turned into a double bonded O and that's your acetoacetate. So acetoacetate is one of our ketone bodies but acetoacetate can undergo a reaction in order to become our second ketone body which is beta hydroxybutyrate. So this is done by the enzyme beta-hydroxybutyrate dehydrogenase. So again, we're going to be using a molecule of NADH plus H, and this is actually going to go to NAD+. Plus. So this is opposite of what we usually have been seeing, but this makes sense because this is done in um, a state where you're going to have more NADH around. And so here it's going to actually um, make that first double bonded O on the th third carbon into an OH and give you beta-hydroxybutyrate. All right, that's all for this one.